down at the bottom right hand corner of Antigua Shipyard. The map Tasha has picked. It is our yellow Terran player from Team Liquid. It is Tasha, his opponent in the upper left hand corner from Startail, winner of the last three games in a row. Certainly doing his job, trying to close things out for them. Our Teal Zerg life. Yep, so here we go. Our first Terran player of the evening, I believe. And yep. uh, yeah, Liquid Teja, a great representative of the Terran race right now. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, he's winning when other uh, Terran players are struggling right he's now. He's pretty is, awesome in general, yeah. He has just figured out what a lot of Terran players have not at this point, showing that it's not balance issues or anything along those lines. It's just the way that people are approaching the game. Yeah, he is a top-tier player, definitely. Um, and it's, it's a reason why it's Team Liquid's ace, too. I mean, he seems to just have the answers for a lot of situations right now. But Life has been playing great. Um, this map is not really, I think, a, a problem for Life at all. I feel like he knows how to play it really well. Uh, Teja knows, though, you know, that's that's the one thing about Life is that Teja, uh, let me tell you about Life, Cats, you know, but <laughs> okay. Teja knows his style. You know, I mean, he knows oh. what he's probably going to have to go up against. And this is interesting. Okay, yeah, he's going to float these down to the low ground, do a little bit of aggression with these forward barracks. 11-11 uh, racks. Yeah. And that's cool, too, because of the way that a lot of players are scouting with their Overlord, as we're seeing from life. They'll mm -hmm. scoot around the back of the map and then kind of shuffle their way around across the uh, across the map to the front of the base and eventually pick up on the natural. Mm -hmm. But unless life shifts this Overlord very quickly, he's going to miss these barracks. Yeah, I think this is really cool, too, in that... Uh, Tage is basically saying, all right, I know you like to be aggressive in the early game in a lot of cases, so I will actually just be more aggressive than you are, and I'll see if I can just get a win that way. So we'll have to see how well it works for him. Um, it certainly could. One barracks floated down right now, and I don't think life has seen. Has he seen the barracks yet? Nope, no, he does not. not know. Doesn't have a clue. And this isn't going to give anything away, because by the time the Overlord gets over there, he's going to think, oh, yeah. all right, well, one Rex well, Castle's fast expand, even Command Center first. Those are all possible in the game well, so today. so many Terran players, too, even if they do make a barracks, will build it out of the way as well. So that Zerg does need to kind of think and be like, oh, no, is it a proxy? And it usually never is. Run, Marine, run. He's got it. Run. And this Overlord is sitting out of the scouting path as oh, well. Interesting. So all okay. of this is going to go unscouted. Tasia huh. certainly has the opportunity to do some damage now. We'll see if life is able to react in time. Yep. Well, when life gives you lemons, <laughs> you make bunkers. Just that's like that SCV is doing. Woof. Thank you. You get mad. Thank you. That's, that's what happens. <laughs> You're not going to take it anymore. <laughs> well, Tasia's saying... I control life. <laughs> That's, and he is. There's a couple more SCVs. Like I and decide these, who lives and who dies. These are scouted, and life is not reacting to this quite yet. He's not pulling anything off the line. He's got to rely on Zerglings for now, like he did before. Six Zerglings coming up, two Queens on the way as well. Yep. But this bunker is finished. Yeah, second bunker going down as well. The first one can protect it. Nice. It's such a great spot for the bunkers as well. That Queen's going to be like, oh, man, I need to just stay away. Yeah. Uh, well, if you can target down the SCV, that'll be nice. He's not doing that, though. Tasha does not have vision to uh, hit the queen up on the high yeah, ground there. He's got to get an SCV up there, maybe, or something like that. Yeah. Uh, or just repair it. That works, too. This queen taking quite a bit of damage, but the hatchery is taking more. It's down below half health now. This queen does have to Whoa. run away. The bunker just continues to get um, repaired up Man, again life. and again and again. Life is in huge trouble. There's two bunkers down. That, that hatchery is actually dead. Yeah, I don't think he can save it. I nope. think it's impossible. Yeah, and he's going to try here in a second. Ten more links coming out. But yeah. all this time, he's not been making workers, by the way. Tasha has not expanded quite yet, but uh, he'll get close. There it is. Hatcher's dead. And Tasia, Look looking at that right control. now. Yeah, I mean, looking right now, like he may be able to win this game very quickly against Life. And there's and an expansion coming up for him, and he's going to yeah, wall man. in with these barracks up at the front. Now, Life's won three games already. So even if he goes down right here, he's still more than done his job. But... Talk about a turnaround. Tata just coming in and smacking down the player that got a bunch of wins against his team. Here come the Zerglings right now. Life's going to try it. Yeah, and it looks like he's going to repair this up as well. So the bunkers will eventually go down, but a lot of Zerglings are going to die in the meantime. So yep. this uh, this does get cleaned up. Life is able to stabilize for now. But as we can see, mm -hmm. he's on 19 workers to his opponent's 18. He's down a base. The command center is almost finished up for Tasha, and Tasha's going over to a third command center as well. Yep. That's right. 
He's also got plenty of barracks out right now, and he doesn't even need to use these for Marines. He probably will, of course, but Terran players in the past have just used this sort of wall to follow up with uh, mech play, you know, go for something like Blue Flame Hellions very quickly. Now, if I know life, I would not be surprised one bit to see a Baneling Nest go down very, very soon. He doesn't yes. strike me as a type of player to try to macro out of this, but I guess I'm wrong because he's throwing down the third hatchery, so never no, mind. I was there with you. I mean, life certainly has the opportunity to, or it yeah. has the tendency to play hyper aggressive or at least test the front. It would take a lot of banelings to go through the barracks, of course, with 1,000 mm -hmm. hit points apiece, but uh, still not out of the realm of possibility. Double gas coming down for Tasha though, and he is just about to finish up his third command center. Yeah. Life's one of those players where I see him winning a tournament at some point in the next year like a major tournament. I feel like he really will. Yeah, I, I think he has yeah. the potential to. I mean, once he kind of, uh, you know, gets everything uh, under check, but uh, he, he's started to get a lot of big game experience. This is certainly a high pressure situation as well, and he's taken three games, so he certainly, uh, he's certainly proven himself to be effective. Going for three hatches is a, a cool choice too, because it's basically saying, all right, I know how far behind I am. I'm just gonna have to take this risk, and if it doesn't pay off, big deal. You know, I probably wasn't going to be able to win with like an all-in anyway, but if it does work, then, you know, at least I will have done what I needed to do. Well, let's see here now as Tasia going ahead and finishing up his third orbital command. He's got a bunker up in the front. He's getting combat shields for now. And uh, we'll probably see our first factory sometime soon. There's an engineering bay on the way as well. Yep. Two engineering bays. So we'll go for double upgrades and uh, probably going to be just going more or less marine tank. Well, I mean, with a very normal push after 1-1. Uh, one, one. Well, Maybe. We, s we saw even on Build Order Breakdown the other day, the game between uh, Idra and Marine King, where yeah. uh, um, this was pretty close to the build that Marine King did, minus the, the overt pressure up at the front. So, um, well, I guess he tried to, I suppose. I, I should even say that as well. So just heavy on the upgrades, maybe very late on the tanks, if at all, or yeah. at least they're going to come very late in the game. Now, um, a notable difference between those games, between this one and that one that I want to point out, is that Marine King uh, tried to proxy his barracks in the middle of the map and was immediately scouted, too. So mm -hmm. didn't go as well for him as it did for Tage at this game. That, that does make a huge difference. When your double 11 racks proxy goes badly, that really, really hurts you. Yeah, it looks like Tasha going to take this opportunity to move out across the map. Combat shields will, of course, be finished up and uh, still with a full wall with a defensive bunker sitting up in the back. So uh, Tasha going to be more than secure, even has his factory finished up and is sitting on 40 workers, now 42. Yeah, 40 workers to the 48 of his opponent, actually. So life just basically taking all the chances that he uh, needs to. Droning, uh, you know, over droning in a very dangerous situation, taking three bases in a dangerous situation. But... In the current metagame, it's uh, fairly safe to do that. Your opponent generally isn't going to follow up with attacks as quickly as they used to. I like this, though. Teja looking for uh, hidden bases. You do see a lot of Zergs taking those when they lose their hatchery like that. So this is good due diligence by uh, Teja to just kind of make sure that life isn't kind of pulling anything over on him. And uh, what does he have coming up back at home? Just Reactor and a Starport to eventually add on those medevacs. So things looking pretty normal for Tasia now. Now on Antigua Shipyard, tanks are very good at defending this little uh, space in between all three of your bases. So uh, I wouldn't expect him to add on tanks a little bit quicker than we saw Marine King do against Idra. Um, but, you know, certainly still a lot of game left to be played. We'll see if Life has gotten himself back into this. He does have Bailing Nest, uh, or I'm sorry, Bailing Speed coming up out of that Bailing Nest. Yep, that's right. And you know, life's not in a bad spot, really. I mean, it, it, he has a smaller army than he would have otherwise, obviously. But all when things are all kind of said and done, he's recovered from this really, really nicely. Now the factory with the tech lab is finished up, so we'll see if this gets taken advantage of by Tasha. He is floating out to take his third at the same time as well. Uh, these Marines really weren't being used for anything else other than that due diligence you were talking about before. Attack of Zerglings making their way across the map, but there's already enough forces to be able to repel that pretty handily. Yep, Spire on the way from life, and he's going to already be getting close to 2-2. Look at that, upgrades for our Zerg player, keeping up very nicely with the upgrades for our Terran player as well couple banelings on the way to stay safe now the one little tricky part about what life is doing with this is that he's going mutas and Teja is going nearly all marines i don't think he has any tanks out quite yet no. right yeah he's just got it for later um he's going to be going uh, medic or medevac marine rather right now and of course mutalists are going to have kind of a hard time against that but if life goes for possibly a carapace upgrade first and just harasses a lot with those mutas 
then, uh, you know, it, he can take a few Marine get, hits. Might not do bad. Zerglings starting to filter in now slowly, and uh, Stim is finished up. And oh, those Zerglings are running through a tiny Ooh, little choke wow. point there. Tasia yeah. doing some pretty good damage. Looks like he's going to try and pick off an upgrade. Can't quite do it, but he did lose a single unit there. So economic damage done, army damage done, and he hasn't lost anything yet. Yep, that's right, and because life went for mutas instead of infestors. He can't fungal or anything like that just yet. And here comes Teja again. This base in serious jeopardy is going to kill a lot of drones here. Teja oh, is dropping again. so good. It looks like finally this is going to get cleaned up. But yeah, a lot of damage done once again. How many workers has he killed? Nine so far. Yeah, um, could have been better. Uh, that was two medevacs worth of stuff and another big group of marines too. So that definitely could have gone better for Teja. Now that the mutas are out, dropping is going to be very, very difficult to do. Oh, he did save one medevac. Okay. Yes, so he, he did, did just lose one medevac and what, approximately 20 something marines? Something, yeah, like, something that. like that. G yeah. Give or take. So, But uh, he is sitting on pretty ridiculous production at the moment. Four mm -hmm. barracks over there, four barracks over there. Uh, s uh, five of those barracks actually have reactors on them, so he can make 13 yeah. marines at a time in addition to uh, supplementing a siege tank force. It's that heavy marine style, and uh, Zergs lately have just been going very heavy, mainly against that heavy marine style. Life instead going for the infestation pit, another Evo chamber as well. Um, did he lose an Evo chamber actually in, in one of those drops? Yes, yes, he okay, did. He, he did, did have that, right. that upgrade canceled, which means that his, ah, uh, his okay. plus two attacks are quite delayed. Yeah, that does that does hurt a little bit. Okay, so Muta's trying to harass. And looks like they will get the missile turret. One Muta does go down, though. Second missile turret now starting to do some damage. These missile turrets have certainly uh, done what they needed to do, and they delay for the Marines to get there in time and take out a couple of Mutas on their own. So pretty well done there by Tasia. Good turret coverage. Yeah, Tage is in pretty good shape here. Um, he's got a small-ish army. Uh, Life's decision to not just make a ton of Zerglings and Banelings is actually kind of an interesting one to me. I'm a little bit surprised that he's actually going for Mutas and, and uh, trying to tech up even more. Uh, it's it's actually very unlike him, honestly, to uh, to try something like this rather than just try to overrun his army with Zergling Baneling. We saw him play very, very patiently against Hero, uh, but I feel like in this case, he kind of had the the answer, you know, he had the tech answer for what could do well against Teja, but he's just deciding not to do it. So we'll have to see if it, what he's trying works out here. Okay, well, Teja's starting to move through the middle of the map. He does have a few tanks along with this as well. So big groups of Zerglings and Bailings aren't going to be as much of a threat as they uh, would have been with just a pure bio force. But with that being said, life is now sitting on a fourth base. Teja, I don't believe, has started his fourth command center quite yet, but he does mm -hmm. have Thor production started as well, so we can supplement that anti-air. Yep, Hive on the way for uh, life as well, so he's getting plenty of time to tech up. Get his hive tech up and running. That's wow. a lot of, wow, that's a lot of uh, mutalisks. Why did I forget what those are called? This reminds me a lot, actually, of, oh, never mind. There's an attack coming here, catching that tank out in the open here. Ooh, pathing of the Marines actually almost cost them their lives yeah. as the Banelings were just barely behind. But the tanks that were sitting back here for Tasha actually did just rack up a lot of kills. I feel like he could have pursued there, to be completely honest. I feel like he could have wrapped around those Marines quite nicely. Oh, oh because and he's dropping drop. at the same time. He's killed another eight workers there and uh, going to pick off a Mutalisk or two, but will get cleaned up. Yeah. Yep, that's right. Now, this reminds me a lot of the uh, game between Curious and Beyond on Daybreak that we actually just looked at and built oh, up a breakdown yeah. earlier. Now, that ended up being a win for the Terran player. We'll have to see if life can kind of change that around in this particular case, but Tage is getting that nice high ground now. And uh, he is max. Actually, both players are max and starting to bank resources as well. A couple more command centers coming up for Tasha as well. Everything trying Here to swing go. around the side for life. The Banelings are quite far behind. The Marines have done quite a bit of damage. The tanks really haven't come under fire quite yet, but the Mutalisks are just kind of overpowering everything. Oh, oh but there's enough thors. left over that the uh, Thors actually absorb quite a bit of damage, and the Mutalisks have to run away. So a very good hold there by Tasha. Now he has a significant supply advantage. Yeah, those Mutas took a ton of damage from those Thors, that base is definitely going to need to be canceled. There it is. And now Life is going to be able to, or Tejra is going to be able to start to press his uh, luck, press his advantage. 
Okay, well, we'll see if Life is uh, is, is able to, to mount a defense here because this is looking very strong from Deja. Oh, good fungal pinning things down. Oh, but the rest of the forces were still out in the middle of the map. The Mutal is all dying. This force is getting split up for Life. Not many remaining, actually. He's down by 55 supply now, and Deja may have what it takes to start the comeback train for, uh, for Liquid. Yeah, Life is trying to tech through all of this as well, and oh, the rest of the Mutal is taking a lot of damage down to just three right now. Oh. Oh boy, Antasia knocks out that base. He's going to yeah. take his own fourth at the oh, same time that he kills his opponents. Oh, Tasia immediately dropping down his units, though, to try and take out this force. Yep, that's right. But, I mean, again, look at the supply. Tasia just really getting that nice supply lead. He's got enough production going that even if he loses armies here and there, he's at the point where he's starting to trade as efficiently as life is, if not more efficiently. Okay, well, uh, Life is going to try and rally back at the moment with what he can, but on three bases, one of those mined out, a second almost there as well, down. Uh, well, not really any workers, but oversaturated compared to his opponent. Yeah. Um, it's going to be quite difficult to do so. Well, it's just turning into kind of a, a little bit of a weak late game for Life. You can see he's only got enough for uh, two Broodlords right now. He's making some more Corruptors, but he doesn't really have that Zergling Baneling army to uh, back this up again. There's a Fungal on the Medivac, so he will be able to uh, probably take that out. Yep. He'll yeah. be able to handle that. But again, it's just he's not going to have that strong late game army that you really need against Terran. Five Broodlords in total. Joining the two that are on the field, so it will be seven altogether, but still, life down by what? a lot of supply. And headbutting with oh. those investors not going to work out all that well. I think he was maybe trying to catch some medevacs there, watching for more drops, but he missed that one. And here we go, it's coming into the main. Oh, splitting that drop up at the last second. Really well done, and there are no oh, forces no, going drones. after this drop. That's a lot of drones. That's a lot of dead drones. Yes, it is. Marines are fungal, they don't even care. Meanwhile, in the main. Yeah, more damage being done. Zerklings are going to be sent in to clear that up, but of course, Tasia now sitting on a planetary fortress inside yeah. of this pocket expansion. He's got another one down over at the seven o'clock position, so his economy is rocketing ahead. Yeah, Tage is looking pretty strong right now. Having that fifth base in the middle is definitely going to help him out quite a bit as well. Adding on some more star ports to counteract those Broodlords and getting another factory for more tanks. But here we go. Nice Ooh. fungal on some of those Marines, but no Banelings to take advantage of it. No, and unfortunately all those units are very low in health. Oh, there was a pretty good wow. fungal gross, though. Yeah. But most of the Broodlords have already gone down. The rest of the units trying to run up, but unfortunately the medevac coverage is too great and is starting to counteract the fungal gross faster than they can DPS down the army. Yeah. Banelings rolling in afterwards, but that is not going to be a problem for Tasha. Well, some of the uh, medevacs were out of position there. He probably could have save more marines but as it is he's got plenty anyway the all oh, the brood lords getting taken out so quickly down to just one left two left and it looks like life barely has enough here to push him back he does, but Tasia now up by 80, yeah. a, uh, 80, almost 90 supply. Vikings starting to filter in now, and uh, good on life. I mean, because a big mistake uh, from Tasia, and he certainly could have found himself right back in it, but now it's looking very hard G -G. to uh, overcome this, and there it is, yeah. GG, and Tasia starting to bring things back to Liquid. Tasia did manage to bring up another force at that uh, top center base as well.